Hello, and welcome to my talk on the new RHEL pipeline. My name is Stephen Gallagher. I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat. Uh, I work on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I'm also a member of uh, the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee, and you've probably seen my name on most of the mega threads on Fedora Devel. So let's talk a little bit about what are the problems that we're trying to solve here. The big one is this. Red Hat and Fedora and the open source community have always said that we should default to open. We should make sure that everything we do is in the, in the public eye, can be viewed uh, carefully and inspected for bugs and for security issues. But then we, don't, we haven't really been living that in, when developing RHEL. At a certain point in its development, we fork from the Fedora project, and then we do all the development behind closed doors with some interaction with, uh, with privileged users or partners, uh, software and hardware, but in general, we don't really uh, we don't really uh, involve the community in the actual building of RHEL. On the other side, part of this is because Fedora is just too popular. I know that seems like a good problem to have, but what it means is that we actually have to be cautious in Fedora about making radical changes. Uh, thing, uh, big, huge changes in Fedora affect tens of thousands, of, if not hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, as you, sh you certainly saw recently, uh, in the last couple of releases, we landed modularity, uh, which was a major feature of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. To say that that didn't go smoothly would be a little bit, uh, a little bit of an understatement. But the good news is that we have finally gotten that into a place where it's not as disruptive as it had been, and it was kind of a it was kind of a mirror of other projects like that that we've done in the past. Um, uh, certainly, the switch from Upstart to System D was hardly a smooth transition, and certainly didn't involve any kind of uh, arguments or flame wars. Uh, we could mention GNOME 3.0, but I don't think we'd like to talk about GNOME 3.0 anymore. But some of the things that we really want to do, uh, that, we're going to, that we know are going to be necessary for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, are really hard to do in Fedora because it would impact negatively a large subset of the, uh, of the users. Uh, for example, a while back we tried to consider the possibility of changing our processor optimizations so that when we built, we required a processor that was more recent. You know, maybe something built in the last five years would be an absolute minimum instead of something built in the last, uh, what, decade, which is our current state. And what we got for feedback from that was, of course, too many people are using it. Uh, too many people are relying on that stuff. Similarly, uh, we have, a, we have a, a conflict with what we call dependency minimization. There are places in the server world and in containers where we really, really want to have an absolutely minimal set of dependencies on packages. Um, and then that's not just at uh, runtime, but also at build time. But in Fedora, we have, a, we have this general policy that we've always gone with of always carrying everything that, that is necessary to self-host and to build the entire OS and to build every individual package. And we don't always want to carry that into, into RHEL. For example, um, we don't always want to run all of the upstream tests in RHEL because that may require us to build, uh, to, ca to carry a series of test suites that have an enormous dependency chain in that which we do sometimes, but we don't, we don't want to be, able to be shipping that because we can't support that. It's unrealistic uh, to support every package that has ever been used in that chain. Similarly, we also uh, oftentimes in RHEL, uh, we will not build the documentation from, directly from source. We will build it, uh, one, we'll build it on Fedora, we'll tar it up, and we'll carry it in the uh, RHEL SRPM because 
things like Python Sphinx, for example, pull in thousands, literally thousands of packages. And most of those exist solely for the purpose of supporting the documentation generators. Well, that's not something we need to be maintaining and, and uh, patching constantly. So we want to be able to remove those things. But it's really hard to do in Fedora proper and to make sure that it doesn't it doesn't get broken um, today because we just uh, we we sure we can put conditionals in you know if rel then do that but if we're not actually building it constantly in that format we don't know that we haven't introduced a breaking uh, uh, some breakage there. So why don't we just do all this stuff in rawhide? Um, Rawhide has its has its uses. Rawhide is definitely the next really cool stuff. It's everything that we want to land in the open source community. It's the best of the best. All new features must go into Rawhide. Absolutely. But it's not really the right place to do this because as I said, it's hard to make sure that you don't break things if you're not also always building them in the right in the same way. So what we're going to do is we uh, recently in, uh, instituted a, pr a new program called ELN, uh, or Enterprise Linux Next. So what is ELN? Essentially, it is a, an early preview of the next major release of RHEL. So right now, uh, ELN is going to be developing into what will ultimately uh, become Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9. It's a subset of packages that we rebuild out of um, out of Rawhide uh, in a build route that is designed to be more like RHEL than Fedora. So macros that say if RHEL will trigger, uh, we may play around with those processor uh, optimizations. Uh, we're, when we generate composes of ELN, they will be laid out the same way that a RHEL uh, release tree would be. So if you're used to using uh, the RHEL uh, the RHEL repositories for to, uh, for uh, for your businesses and such. It'll look the same, uh, but it'll be just rebuilt Rawhide packages with no other changes. So how does this work? Well, first and foremost, we need to have a package list because we don't want to rebuild the entirety of Rawhide in a rel build route because that's unmaintainable. There are probably uh, tens of thousands of packages, of uh, binary packages in Fedora that we just are never likely to carry in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So we want to get a, a view of what packages we do care about. And of course, that also means getting a list of all of the things that they require at runtime and that they require to build. So we generated this, we created this uh, project called the Content Resolver. Uh, and you can find it at tiny.distro.builders uh, as a web URL. And what it does is it, is contributed to by all of the people working inside of Red Hat on various subsystems, networking, kernel, uh, virtualization, all of the all of the uh, various uh, different teams that work at Red Hat have provided input content into this uh, content resolver, and then it churns through, it calculates all the dependencies, and it provides output that uh, we are going to be using to uh, to uh, provide an automatic list that we will then rebuild from rawhide every time to make sure that uh, to make sure that we uh, have only the content we need so that we don't waste too many resources on koji and so that we are not maintaining a separate branch in distgit this was a major point of contention when we originally uh, proposed this a lot of people uh, a lot of maintainers dislike the idea of conditionalizing their code for rel versus uh, fedora and what they wanted was that instead of having, instead of rebuilding from Rawhide, just create an ELN a branch in distgit and build from that and try to write to, uh, code that maintain, that keeps it in sync with Rawhide or merging with Rawhide constantly. That turned out to be uh, a bad idea for a couple of different reasons, uh, not the least of which that uh, merges very quickly get uh, complicated and manually merging doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And also, we want it to be the default that everything that is on that content resolved list 
must end up in ELN it's, uh, at some point. Now, for those pa for those packages that don't want to have conditionals, that's fine. What we're going what they can do is they can continue to build it just as Fedora, and it'll get into ELN just as Fedora, just as it was packaged in Fedora, and that isn't an ideal situation, but it still gets us a lot closer to what we want RHEL to look like. And it still allows us to get a feel for what what content and what uh, feature set is going to be available to us. Down the road, there will be, uh, we'll be able to break that uh, and, and uh, move into a separated version where we can have individual packages uh, make rel specific changes that are independent from fedora but that won't happen in eln where that will happen i am proud to announce is in centos stream starting with red hat enterprise linux 9 and eln we are going to be building a new form of centos centos stream today we have a centos stream that allows uh, public the public to contrib contribute to uh, the next Y stream release, we call uh, that would be you know X dot Y, so rel eight point three, eight point four, eight point five. The, those contributions go through CentOS stream today. Starting with rel nine, the next evolution of ELN will be a public disk git repository for development towards the beta of rel. So all rel features, uh, not including uh, things that must be kept uh, secret for. Uh, proprietary uh, license agreements or CVE, uh, CVEs, all of these things will go through and be committed to CentOS stream first. And so for those packagers who didn't want ELN, uh, want rel specific changes in their rawhide packages, they can wait for this phase and they can put those rel specific changes into the CentOS stream. This will be you know, constantly rebuilding and composing uh, those composers will be uh, publicly available and usable, and we'll be working as hard as we can to get as many partners, users, software developers uh, working with those so that when Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 eventually launches, they'll have those, uh, they'll have certifications all taken care of, and they'll have an early view of what it is that they'll be able to do. Or if they can't, if they can't yet do it, they'll have a place to contribute those features that they're going to want to depend on. Ultimately, the point is this all leads to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, a long-term stable platform run for the next 10 years, supporting certified platforms, hardware, software, applications. And for the very first time, we are going to be doing the majority of that process publicly in the open with uh, with accepting comment and contribution from anyone. Uh, the first, I, I saw a question in the chat uh, from, uh, let's see, uh, from uh, Michael Ko Konechny. Um, apologize if I've mangled that. Uh, will CentOS stream be created from Fedora or will it be Fedora to RHEL to CentOS stream? Uh, the answer is uh, right now we're planning for it to actually come from ELN. We're going we're gonna to fork um, we're going to fork Fedora at a certain point, uh, and then and that'll be uh, become CentOS Stream. So it's actually it really is going to be a progression towards RHEL rather than building necessarily in RHEL and down. Um, the actual logistics of that are a little funny because RHEL will also be forking from Fedora for and they'll be keeping in parallel for a while, but. Uh, that's realistically, uh, yeah, it's forking from Fedora. And let's see, will composers for Stream Nine be published since the beginning as well? Yes, yes, they will. Uh, they're going to be uh, all of the com all of the nightlies or periodic composers that we do will be released uh, uh, as they come as they come out, and you know, assuming they aren't broken. But we're trying very hard. Uh, Pierre uh, Pierre Ves Chibon. Uh, Pingu, uh, did you build that castle? No, my daughter did. Uh, my two daughters actually built that. Thank you. Um, let's see. Did I? Uh, all right. Some offers to help, which is always great. 
uh, let's see. Yeah, the uh, so there was a question: uh, is the or to the equivalent of uh, how would this mean we have a regular cadence for rel releases? Yes, at uh, Summit this year, uh, there was a formal announcement that Red Hat Enterprise Linux will be releasing from now on every three years a major release, and every six, uh, approximately every six months, we'll have a minor release. So, yeah. So this is a, this is part of how we're going to accomplish accomplish that. So uh, I look forward to the uh, to any and all con uh, help and contribution that you can provide because it will make life easier. <laughs> so will so with this ELN thing, will that allow the community to contribute to rel feature and stabilization development? Uh, yes and no. It will allow you to contribute to uh, feature uh, to features, uh, and certainly if you contribute a bug fix to uh, a bug fix, I imagine we're going to take it. Um, there will be a point after which uh, we will close contribution uh, to send to a stream for 9.0 and then and then subsequent pull requests will be headed for uh, 9.1 at that point we'll be going through the necessary uh, stabilization to meet uh, enter enterprise uh, certifications and whatnot and that'll happen internally um, let's see yes uh, covid did play havoc with our plans we were of course, you know that that's what we get for uh, for saying we're going to do this on a on a schedule is that the world says ha, but uh, yeah we are really trying to accomplish this. Um, we should get uh, we should get that info on access.redhat.com. I'm not uh, entirely sure what that means, uh, uh, what that link goes to. So, uh, David Duncan, are there established community meetings now? Not yet. Um, we're we're, st we're trying to ramp it up. We're still uh, we're still in a point where we were trying to get ELN to work. Uh, we do have some we do have composers that are functional now, uh, but for a variety of reasons, including the mass rebuild, uh, things are are still in a little bit of a shaky uh, state. As soon as that's done, hopefully in the next week, uh, we're going to be trying to open up much wider uh, contribution. Uh, can you clarify what you said in the talk about an ELN diskit branch? I got a bit confused. So. There isn't one. That's the short answer. Uh, there was, when we first uh, pitched this uh, this process, a lot of people wanted us to make ELN its own separate branch, so people could, you know, instead of having to put conditionals in their code, they could just commit to the ELN branch. But the fact of the matter is that that leads that that made it it makes it harder to maintain, and it means that the people who aren't directly interested in enterprise Linux will just ignore it, and that wasn't something we wanted. We wanted to make sure that we were always building from the latest. And so we needed to work or uh, find our way to work with Rawhide. And so we didn't, we opted not to create a separate branch. We're building everything from the Rawhide commit. And in those cases where we need something to be different for RHEL and the maintainer is not willing to do that, we're just going to defer that, uh, that those changes until CentOS stream opens, which is not ideal, but uh, it, it is a good compromise for everyone, I think. Uh, let's see. Can you, uh, ELN is built from Rawhide Branch, not you. Okay, yes, Carl, thank you. Uh, what is the scope of the, ELN, of the ELN SIG in terms of deliverables? Uh, realistically, our scope is. Okay, that's a good, that, that is actually a trickier question to answer than uh, ex than expected. Um, at its core, our, our goal is to make sure that we can always start CentOS stream basically at any moment. So we can, so at any time, we could arbitrarily just branch off and say, "Ah, rel n plus one is now is now uh, getting started over here in CentOS stream." So it's meant to be a, a continuously bootstrapped uh, OS, rather than uh, rather than uh, every couple of years doing a big rel bootstrap uh, to start everything over again. Um, Let's see. And was this influenced by how OCP allowed folks to test nightly builds before release? Uh, as that is actually the first I've heard of that. No, uh, but I'm glad that they're doing this too. <laughs> uh, do the do the ELN have Rel or Fedora branding? Um, it's Fedora. It is it is Fedora branded. It is under the Fedora umbrella. It will uh, it will have uh, it will be Fedora. It'll just be Fedora with. 
uh, with a, an enterprise Linux flavor to it. Uh, and yes, as Matthew uh, Miller says, we want to make sure that we keep Red Hat engineering investment in Fedora uh, because the more that Fedora has moved towards uh, being a very desktop focused and a very successful desktop focused Linux distribution, the more there has been question internally as to whether or not it's particularly useful as a place to develop RHEL. And so by building ELN and having a, a very clear spot for that, uh, for that uh, effort to go, helps us make sure that uh, we keep the people who are being paid to work on uh, on RHEL to do their work in Fedora so that we get that community contribution and we get that community feedback. All right, so if uh, Dusty says, so if I see an ELN build in Koji, it's not built from an ELN branch, it's built against a different build route with different macros. Yes, exactly right. It's always coming from the Rawhide branch. Uh, it will be coming from the exact same commit that the most recent successful Rawhide commit uh, build uh, built from, um, and yep, use the Fedora brand, Fedora Enterprise Linux Next. Yes, uh, it, there's a there's a story behind the uh, behind the acronym ELN, and I'll tell it to anyone who wants to hear over uh, you know privately. But uh, we'll talk about it later. How to join the SIG? Uh, look for information next week. I hope uh, I'm going to put out a, a wider call and try to and try to start setting up a, a regular. Uh, probably bi-weekly meeting. Uh, Enterprise Liberation Front. Uh, I feel like there's a Monty Python skit coming on, but uh, I will restrain myself. Yes, there also may have been some eyes raised over ButterFS, but that really came later. Uh, okay, did earlier rel branch from Fedora stable or Rawhide? Is that different now with branching from Rawhide, since no separate branch? Um, well, actually, it's... It, CentOS Stream is actually is probably going to branch from uh, Fedora 34. That's uh, pretty uh, pretty obvious now. Um, but it's ELN will will stay on uh, will stay on Rawhide, but it will be uh, but we will also be running some tests against the Fedora 34 branch. But traditionally, RHEL has always branched from the, the stable release of a Fedora. Uh, usually, we've done an alpha on one release, then rebased to the uh, to the GA of the next release before we do uh, to start stabilization for beta. Um, but it, I don't think it's going to have a huge impact because for, uh, the truth of the matter is that. Very little lands in. Uh, very little happens in Rawhide during the stabilization branch of a stable Fedora. Some people get early features in, and we'll be monitoring for that. Uh, but realistically, I don't think it's going to change much. And let's see. Did okay. Uh, it's a great server too. Thanks. I'm glad you hear that. How different are the ELN and Fedora build systems? Will they converge over time? Uh, well, they're identical because we are using Koji. Um, the only the, the difference between them is entirely in the build root contents. Uh, we prefer, you know, if there's an ELN equivalent build, we pre the build root will prefer that build for the, uh, for the dependencies. Um, it has some different macros set so that uh, you can do if rel and it'll build like it was rel. But for the most part, they're pretty identical. So, and, and they are using the same exact hardware. Uh, we just build with a lower priority so we don't clobber anybody's uh, important build with our rebuild. Uh, people were asking if ButterFS in 33 meant rel 8 would get it soon. I am not answering that. <laughs> not, in, not even a little. Rel 10 has to come with, from somewhere, so ELN will go on and on. Yes, thank you, Steve. Um, let's see. What's Fedora stables, like Ryan Inboard stable. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you think ELN will be consumable for users, like real Fedora server users migrating to it, or more like Rawhide in numbers? Um, ELN is absolutely and unequivocally not intended for production use. Please don't use it on your servers. <laughs> uh, it is it is intended entirely to be a place where we try out uh, new functionality, where we start to help, where we have partners working to land hardware support and things like that. Uh, don't use it for any. Don't use it for anything you can afford to lose. You can't afford to lose. Please. I am not going to be held responsible for that. How are you building the ELN builds with different, different macros since they are not defined in Rawhide Diskit branch? Uh, so right now, 
I'm surprised to hear that you to get that call, uh, that question from Mohan because you helped me set it up. But uh, <laughs> the answer is uh, we are currently we're setting them in um, in the in the Koji build tag or build target. Uh, you can specify certain options, and we're overriding. Uh, the, the ones that are coming from uh, Red Hat RPM uh, macros or Red Hat RPM config, whatever it's called. Uh, however, we are actually planning in uh, the next in the next uh, week or so, we're going to be changing uh, the Red Hat RPM config uh, package so that we'll bootstrap it with the uh, with the ELN tag uh, target uh, overrides, and then after that, it'll be able to check its own re build route to see that okay, we're in ELN, so use these mac set these macros. Uh, it that's a bit low level for this talk. I probably should have just said that. <laughs> so after CentOS Stream, we'll switch to Miner. Do we expect that the build will go patch CentOS Stream rel Miner? Yes. Yeah, just uh, just like it does in in CentOS uh, Stream for rel eight now. Uh, could CentOS Stream be built in Fedora Koji as well? Uh, I would probably say that from a technical perspective, it could, but I think that's probably not going to happen in the immediate future just because uh, CentOS has its own build system set up and there's probably not a, fi a good financial reason to merge them at this point. But uh, I don't think that it's technically impossible. Uh, Steven Smugin says we're moving the Fedora builders to ELN next month. That's okay. We can afford to lose those, right? And uses Fedora Rawhide snapshot kernels. That is enough not to not do that. Uh, all right. Or, and I'm not okay. Could we branch ELN to .elx in Fedora distgit instead? I'm not sure what that uh, what uh, you mean by that question, Neil. Sorry. Uh, I'll move on to the next one, and uh, if you put a Clarification, I'll come back to it. What will be the cadence of CentOS Stream when it's switched to RHEL Miner? Uh, I'm not sure that's a question for me anyway. Uh, let's talk more about that. Here. Plans to keep Stream 8 better aligned to the latest 8 beta. Is that a question, James Cassell? I'm not sure. I, uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not particularly, uh, closely involved with the CentOS Stream 8 folks, so I don't really know what to say there. Uh, post ELN to rel stabilization and CentOS Stream. Oh, um, I mean, there's lots of things we could do. Uh, I'm not sure that it makes sense to do that uh, at this point. We are trying to, uh, to work on some tools to make, the, uh, it, make it easier to operate with uh, the three different disk gets, uh, the one for Fedora, the one for CentOS, and the internal one for RHEL. But uh, I don't think that there is any particular need to have, or as of right now, I'm not aware of any uh, hard plans to merge the Cento the disk gets. Uh, I know that's been talked about, but I don't know that it's happening. Um, yeah, that's right. As a stream doesn't have a cadence, it's a stream. You, I, you, it can, contributions can go into stream at any time. It is never closed or and never frozen. However, it is branched from, and then uh, rel internal stabilization happens, and then they merge. Then when that's released, it merges back into stream and carries on. Um, so Neil, basically branch it there so that CentOS stream would operate in Fedora Koji, then and then Apple and CentOS would be in one place. It is worth discussing with the CentOS stream folks, uh, but it's not currently a it's not currently in the plan because it's not a blocker to doing any of the things that we've talked about today. So, and I think I may be over my time. So uh, I want to thank everyone who came and asked questions.